Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Create Smarter Podcast. I'm your host today, Connor Clarity, and I'm joined by three of my goodest buddies here. Ooh. we got Phil, Marissa, and Kyle. Thank you so hey. much for taking the time out of your day. Honored. Sit down and talk about me, about a cool subject. We're talking today about live production and how to add a creative shot, you know, how to, how to, how to spice up that production so it's not just a, a boring show for the viewer, um, at-home, hybrid audience kind of deal. So let's talk about that. So we do a lot of, you know, live or hybrid events where um, we'll have a, uh, an audience that's online, right? So all they see is the switch produce feed that we send out to them. Uh, and most of the time, it's only a two camera production. You got a wide and a tight on the speaker on stage or in the studio, wherever it is. Um, so today we're gonna talk about how do you add something to that experience for that, you know, the person at home watching online? How do, how do you add a creative uh, a camera? Um, and I think this started from Phil last week. You shared something in our, our, our little uh, five tool chat about a Celtics game where they, they try to do a similar thing. We're not just talking about our productions, but just any production. So why don't you tell us about what you found and what you thought about. Yeah, so during uh, Celtics playoff game, uh, everybody online noticed, because it was very visible, a drone flying around in the arena. And it was actually a drone by the network that was producing the game. Um, and you could visibly see it in one of the, in the main broadcast shot, you could visibly see the drone flying back and forth. Um, but it wasn't just capturing content for on demand. Then they would cut to that camera live mm -hmm. in the broadcast. Um, really interesting, really interesting idea. And it's kind of like, how do you get a different angle? The only problem for me was when they cut to that camera, it's a very similar angle mm -hmm. to the broadcast yeah, angle. Right. So I think, you know, as you tee up this whole conversation, one of the main questions I would say you should always ask when you think about adding a creative element to your broadcast is like, what does this add? Yeah, why and add it? Why add it? Right. Right. And in the case of that drone shot, it's like you could have done something really interesting where it was either, you know, really low at court level or, sure. you know, directly over tip off, you know, ju just beneath the jumbotron yeah, or eye view type. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all the way up in the rafter, shooting straight down, getting different angles. But if it's going to be exactly the same or really similar to your broadcast right. shot, you know, why is it there? The other thing is it was directly in view of the main broadcast shot. So people watching at home yeah, see it. I so. think not like the, the yeah. main thing that people took away from that is that they saw the drone, not like the cool shot that they got from the drone because yeah. it was so similar. So people were talking about the wrong thing. People probably didn't even realize that the shot they cut to was the drone. No. They see the yeah, drone exactly. flying through like, that's They're dumb. Like some guy in this <laughs> thing, uh, you know. Yeah, they wouldn't have noticed it was different if the drone would, didn't fly through the shot, right. I feel like. Right. And Kyle, you actually brought up a good point in the chat about, um, we were talking about alternatives. What else could they do to fix this? Oh my gosh, it's something, you know, throw it to the other side of the court. But you said something interesting about the logo and why that wouldn't be a solution. Oh, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, we're fans of wrestling, right? Yeah, so right. it's the hard cam. Like, that yeah. is situated, the logo, if you looked at the Celtics logo, that was facing the camera, so mm -hmm. it's not upside down. Like, I mean, immediately when you talked about it, I thought the same thing. Like, put it on the other side of the court. Right, but so it's not in that main broadcast right. view. It's out yeah. of the broadcast. You would have had a cool, the same angle, same motion and everything like that, but totally. it would have, the logo would have been upside down, which is probably more behind the broadcast than anything with that, because... For the most part, the audience isn't really looking at the logo, be like, that's upside down, that's upside yeah, down. Yeah, they know like, what home court they're playing on, right. you know. Mm -hmm. But the sponsors are now going to get upset, and that's a whole other thing. Yeah, but have you been watching the NHL? Like, that's been the more fascinating thing. Sorry to, like, oh, derail from, your yeah. podcast. Have you know. been watching along the uh, the panels it's where they're putting <laughs> – because when they go to certain shots, they can't don't do the overlay the AR. Them. Don't get me started <laughs> on the <laughs> oh, no. digital ads in the NHL. We're going like, to completely it's, derail it's, this. But it's very <laughs> fascinating because if you're watching, right, they keep changing up because they the hard cam, the main yes. shot, they, they can have – they can change it up however That's they where want. That's the motion track And when they is, get yeah. down, they can't yeah. do that for the motion track. And you're like – it's the same with WWE. They yeah. do the same stupid thing with the AR where they're trying to put this in there. And you're like, it doesn't work. It's just that's something that's not yeah. even It's a cool one-off, but don't don't in, rely on that. In know? the NHL, basically, they made it standard that the, the main broadcast shot, they're able to superimpose digital ads all along the gotcha. boards. Yeah. Um, so, so it's uniformed. It looks nice. It, they've worked out the kinks. It looked terrible at the beginning <laughs> of the season. It looks okay now. It's I find it very distracting because yeah. there's motion happening. That's not the game. Yeah. But that said, they've worked out a lot of the kinks there. But say they're playing in Boston, mm -hmm. the boards actually have ads on them. So it'll say, you know, um, Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. Um, and But on the on the main broadcast feed, they'll cut around and in the national feed, it'll be a digital ad for, you know, um, Domino's, whatever. Wow. And then they cut to an ice level shot, you know, as a cutaway and you see a different ad there. Yep. So when they cut back and forth, it feels like you're looking at a different rink. I'm suddenly in a different stadium. It's just jarring. It yeah. pulls yeah. you out. It's of very it jarring. Bit. I was I like, what that. is happening? Because like, 
I saw that. I was watching the I was watching the uh, the Las Vegas Knights and the same thing because I'm not a big hockey fan. I was just watching the playoffs. I was like, wait, what? happened right i'm Hold like am i now. crazy i'm like i thought it was a different yeah. ad. I'm watching like, two different games yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because like the world cup for instance did do a good job at i was that. gonna say soccer does a, a pretty good job really what are you guys talking job about like switching it all up you'll, you'll yeah. notice it sometimes in baseball the behind the plate put at, it on we're, the we're, mound right well, they put it on the mound but they have green screen ads behind the plate yeah. too mm-hmm. yeah. and sometimes that won't be a green screen it'll be the same thing it'll be superimposed so then they'll get a cutaway and you're like i'm I thought that was <laughs> an ad for DraftKings, and actually it's FanDuel, Ouch, you know. Gosh. So it's it's, but, but it's that type of thing that right. it takes you out of the. It yeah. brings you yeah. back to the original point of this whole conversation is like your extra shot can't be so distracting that it takes you out of the yes. moment. I mean, with sports and in, in, sports is a very energetic motion game. It's something that really, why do you need that shot? Like back, yeah. you're saying, why do you need the drone shot? What's that adding that you don't do? And I get it, you're trying to get more of a an eagle eye point of view from like the sports thing, but like. That shot that they had for basketball for the Celtics really wasn't that different than what the hard camera was. Right. Like so, mm-hmm. like and then there's times where they put angles up there. I know and at football, like they'll do kickoff and they'll go behind that and try to follow along. I hate that because you can't see what's happening. It's yeah. very hard to understand that stuff. But like that's the whole idea of why you need to focus on what shots you're using. Yeah, I think yeah. that's the big thing for me when I'm watching sports. Like if they change the angle during a basketball game, I'm like, I can't see what's happening. Yeah. I don't like this. Like they're gonna miss that shot because I'm not seeing it the way that it should be. Like I don't think that they should play. Don't don't mess with it too much if it's not uh, broke. I yeah, guess. and sometimes I, I think the same thing as you, and I wonder, like, am I just being a grumpy old man who doesn't like change? Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, they had, a uh, similar to the, the cameras you all are describing in the NHL, they put one, like, behind the goal for power plays up high so you can see the offensive zone, but then it's, like, a lot of the action in an NHL power play happens um, at the blue line, so it happens way far away from the goal, so it's happening, you know, whatever, 60 feet away from the camera, so you see the goalie, and that's actually, like, Unless you're a goalie coach, that's not necessarily what you're interested in. You're interested in the puck movement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the main broadcast camera captures that well because it's at center ice. Right. This camera suddenly is all the way over here. The action's here. <laughs> and you actually can't keep track of it. So it's, again, yeah. are you doing it just to do it? Or are you doing it because it adds something for the viewer? And it, yeah, I feel you know. like uh, the AK cam in football works because there's a lot of downtime in football. Mm-hmm. So you can get the, there's space for those creative shots. Like in basketball or in hockey, there's not too much downtime. There's constant action. So I feel like keep it simple for the action so people can watch it and like see what's going on but if you have to fill dead time or kind of like or replays or yeah, something exactly. too like those like shots are good creative. to have just yeah don't put them in the live broadcast and the same goes for corporate production yeah, too exactly not bad to have it but maybe not in the live broadcast yeah. but you do hit on something that's pretty interesting both of you of the idea that the the monoculture the idea that everyone watches the same video at this point that's kind of dying right like more and more people are going to their niche they want to watch certain things your camera that you talk about in hockey that's very specific to people who really love hockey that want to see the zones want to see that type of stuff college football and i think football too in nfl has the all 22 which is a wide shot of the entire field so you see all 22 players on the field so you can see how stuff develops people are really into that love it it's a very small audience very niche and stuff but that's another additional type of thing you can think about in your production of like what is the niche audience Mm. like the general audience may like this stuff but there could be something that's so specific even in corporate video they like wow my salespeople would really love to be watching this or seeing how this person's interacting even if there's a lot of downtime that's killing that a general audience wouldn't care about that's a really interesting thing to add to a production can I keep us on this tangent of for course, one second yeah. before we make it relevant to <laughs> our world? Again? Question for us. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go the, off this tangent. The, the, example, just, the, exa- <laughs> the example just gave it's more true. It's streaming too, where like sports is one of those things where like everybody has a shared experience or watching the same thing, and that's not true anymore with mm-hmm. streaming. Like you mentioned with college, NBA TV also has um, an option. If you pay for NBA TV, if you're a fan of an out of market team like I am, you pay for NBA TV, and you can watch the main broadcast feed, or you can pick from these other feeds, and one is on top of you know the home net one is on top of the away net and it's that same view like i described in hockey where you can see the zone (coughs) or they have superstar iso cams so it's they pick one player from each team and there's just a camera trained on them no matter what they're doing they could be you know standing there could be free throws happening or a fight happening and they're standing 20 feet away from the action (laughs) and the camera's still trained on them yeah um again that's super interesting to have it's interesting if you're a scout or if you care only about a specific player or any number of reasons. But if you think social, about social so social content, all sure. The additional places you'd be yeah. put in the stuff. Or if you think about like this player has insane facial reactions, we want to have a camera yeah. trained on them. However, in the scope of a live broadcast, yeah. there's a reason that there are people in the roles that we're in for shows, directors and technical directors and camera ops. You're trying to find the right shot for the right time. Um, 
and you might capture those other ones and go back to them and replay or use them in on demand, but that doesn't mean you need to cut to it live. No. So like those angles are interesting and they might be interesting for some people. But not for the 99 percentile yes, exactly. we're selling yeah. and uh, broadcasting right. too. But they in the example of the NA plays, right? Like yeah. if you yeah. think about it, it is kind of an untapped thing, right? In replays, they they're going to have a hard they're going to have a camera that's following a star, right? Follow this guy. I want to be able to go to reaction shots even if they're on the bench. I want to see LeBron jump up when mm -hmm. something yep. happens, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. But the idea to like, hey, that's wasted. We're wasting that resource by only using yeah, it for stream replays. Stream it. <laughs> stream it. Go to a place that we're like, hey, I might only have 50 people who are going to watch this, but that's still 50 people that are finding this experience more yeah. delightful than they did before. But 100%. don't cut to it in the main broadcast. No, no. Make yeah. it an option. For no reason. And the, I'm right. I'm really sorry. We're <laughs> <done> <laughs> hey, okay. Connor is not the, hosting anymore. He's not even a part the of The NHL did the so same thing headphones. a couple of years ago. <laughs> it would be like, um, it was during... Um, they would like when Adam Fox was on the ice for the Rangers, you know, they would the whole time, the whole time he was on the ice, his whole shift, there would be a main broadcast cam and a picture and picture would be following Adam Fox. And it was like, I could see him in the main broadcast and I could also see him there. And I was just, this is not <laughs> a positive experience. Like, no. I love Adam Fox and I want to see what he does. And I would love to like have access to this. If this play results, if this shift results in a, in a goal or he makes a great pass, Show me that as a replay. I'm glad yeah. you have that camera on him. I do not want you showing it to me the whole time. Show me the game. But it's cool to have it as options. Anyway. And now I'll hijack. They had that on the PGA <laughs> this past week. They yes, had Max they Homa up in the corner for about half an hour, literally just uh, watching. He's watching golf. <laughs> and I'm watching him watch golf that the golf I'm watching, I'm like, not necessary. Right. And, it, and it goes to the – The Masters does that, and they're really good at that yeah. too. And it, it's the alternate forms this of broadcast like classic, too. No one cares about it. Some, something that does work well. I don't know. Have we? I feel like we've talked about it before. Is like the Manning cast. Yeah. Like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. thinking about that the yeah. whole time we were yeah. talking about this. Like, yeah, that's a special audience. I actually like. I flipped to it once by accident, and I was like, "What is this?" I was like, "I don't want to watch <laughs> this because it just didn't. I didn't. I didn't want it to change." Like you were saying, like I was used to watching football the way I wanted to, and I didn't want it to change. But then you tap into these niche markets, mm -hmm. like, "Oh, some people really care about the Manning brothers yeah. um, commentating this game or whatever." Or they yeah. guest on their personalities themselves. Right. right. So it's it's almost like if someone for uh, if someone was not a true diehard football fan you're like all right i'll watch a game of football but it's boring i'll be on my phone the whole time you add these two kooky guys and maybe a, a guest and they'd be like suddenly we're watching the game with buddies you know right and or like the nickelodeon yeah. um yeah. 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 and that's games. fun but those are all those are all alternate broadcasts yes. to the live yes. so right. the manning cast they do it for sunday night baseball with michael k and alex rodriguez the women's ncaa tournament they had an alternate broadcast with like sue bird and a couple other players which was awesome yeah, by right. the way because they were all drinking during the broadcast and like <laughs> oh, just yeah. letting loose and having fun trash talk it. It, yeah, it was awesome phenomenal. and those are great but those are all alternate options yes. for mm -hmm. people who want them the live broadcast i feel like is like sacred and yeah. anything you add <laughs> to it needs it. to it's got to be test out all your junk in those exactly. broadcasts right, 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 right. get some feedback bowl. and let people be like hey you know when you have the drone i actually yeah. do see it like yes. test that yeah. out in the in a yeah, different yeah, broadcast probably. that should be in the gatorade league yeah. G League. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like, don't know why I said the entire <laughs> yes. name. I don't know if anyone's ever called it the Gatorade. <laughs> I forget League that it before. is called the Gatorade. The Crates Made a pod the Crates Mater podcast sponsored by Gatorade. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> back to the real why I brought well, you all, all here. here. This is I'm going to have to change the is, title of this podcast. This is all relevant. I it mean, definitely it is. Relevant. Yeah. And uh, you all bring up great points because I had one or two written down, so that's awesome. <laughs> but bring it. <laughs> good prep, good prep. I didn't prep at all, so thank you for doing I the work. Good prep. Anyways, bring it back to like what we do. Let's call it corporate video. Let's call it live production. Whatever it is, we're we're at an institution, right? A university, or we're at somebody's. Um, I'm thinking like Compass. We're at an mm -hmm. office building, broadcasting their live stream to their niche audience, right? Whatever it is, big or small. How do you make that um, as interesting? We can't fly a drone indoors in, in, in Tufts, mm -hmm. you know. We but can't. Why not? The top. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> call, call Sorry, we got to go get a drone <laughs> real yeah. quick. Yeah, but, but it could to do. It's a different topic, right? Yes, like yeah. it's comparing sports it's to corporate are mm -hmm. different. Yeah. So there's the same idea of what what's the main thing? What's the what's the crux? What's the why of what we're trying to accomplish? And then it's thinking about okay, what else would an audience member that's here for the why want to potentially right. see? And those mm -hmm. are the things you can think about. Yeah. Like you don't need a drone for a webisode, right? Uh, because they're used to someone in a buttoned-up shirt talking to slides. 
So how do you help that and why are you helping that is yep. the biggest thing to kind of think about. Yeah, and I think especially because it's not specifically entertainment, you almost need to come up with ways to make it a little bit more interesting. Otherwise, especially if you're a hybrid audience, it can be easy to tune out mm. um, because you're just watching a screen with somebody talking to slides. And yes, it's really important for people that are, you know, in an all-hands meeting and that information pertains to them. But I think if you add something like a roving camera or some other alter alternate shot, it adds something different, even though it's not entertainment, and it still helps kind of keep the attention. Yeah, I think the big thing we always talk about is, like, we try to produce everything like a broadcast-style show, even if it is something that, you know, traditionally might have been done a little more dry. Um, but you do sometimes have to resist the urge to do things just for the sake of doing them. Mm -hmm. um, Marissa, you mentioned the roving camera, and, like, it, it's a different angle on the stage, but also the primary reason you, you go in as a rover is to be able to get fully different angles from where our primary cameras are stationed to be able to show different people, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you shoot a reverse shot out into the audience to be able to capture Q and A. Yeah. Um, you uh, talk about your experience with like um, the Joe Andrews foundation. We did their gala. Yeah. You were both on wireless yeah. cameras. So talk mm -hmm. about your experience there and, w and what you did there. Cause there was, most of the show you were roving and the wireless camera was really specific reason for that. Yeah. Can we quickly define roving too? I know it's something oh yeah. we all know. Yeah, but yeah. yeah so roving. the roving camera, AKA usually me, um, but it's, <laughs> it's basically our wireless transmitter. Humble um, brag. Humble brag. Yeah. I am the rover. Uh, <laughs> I am the rover. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, it's our wireless camera that can kind of, um, uh, be transmitted from anywhere. So it doesn't need to be, um, I guess taped down yeah, by it's not static. hard wired. It's it's not hard static, wired. the right, static exactly. is the word I was looking for. Thank yeah. you. Um, so we can be moving around with it. So for the JAF gala, Connor and I were moving around uh, the room, getting shots of the audience, and that was really helpful in that experience because it was, I think it was like for the auction and stuff like that mm -hmm. too. We were trying to get um, people in the audience that were auctioning, um, like offering bidding, whatever on certain items um, so you can actually see instead of just staring at a stage where nothing's actually happening on stage you can see what's actually happening in the audience right. um, you can see the people's reactions and like the hosts coming off the stage and going to interact with these people and that is not something that you're going to get um, as much with a static shot that's just focused on the stage yeah and if you think about our production we're in the back traditionally you know when you're producing a show you're in the back of the room and there's cameras in the back of the room pointing towards the front you all, you know, go to the front and shoot the opposite way to get those. And what you just mentioned, like 100%, you can't get that from the back. But then the other part was there was a live um, musical performance with, mm -hmm. you know, song and dance. Um, everybody stands up and dances. Our cameras, per first of all, are partially blocked from the back. Yeah. And also, they're just not getting interesting angles. Mm -hmm. So in that case, like, what's a big part of dance? Footwork. A ton of what you got was close-ups of people's feet moving, yeah, right? I like think that changes. That's something different than what we can get in the back, and it adds to what they're doing. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think for that portion of things, I was closer to the stage, and you were getting like audience shots, yeah, people dancing. Mm -hmm. So people you can dancing. Yeah. You can see the actual reactions of the people having fun at this event, which yes. is what the client's going to want to see. Is like, oh, people are actually enjoying themselves. Right. Um, so it's not only getting cool alternate angles of what's happening on stage, but then also the reactions and the people enjoying themselves that are at the event. And also letting the online audience experience that. Yeah. We, we could have easily been like, all right, too, yeah. goodbye. Mm -hmm. Like, you've had your time, but now in, in person, we're going to have a great time and let you guys watch a slideshow. You photos. bring them into right. that. Bring them in, yeah. and yeah. they might be dancing in their living room having a bed. We don't know. Well, as a technical director, I mean, a lot of times that's what I'm trying to do at mm -hmm. these hybrid events and stuff like that is if I'm sitting in that audience, if I'm watching this conference, I'm not necessarily going to be staring at the slides for the entire conference, right? Right. If q and is happening, that's where a roving camera is awesome because when at a conference, you are going to look at who's asking the question. You yeah. are going to be watching a panel on stage having these interactions and that's really what we're trying to bring when we do these types of productions because it isn't just one person speaking like you would never watch it like that you would get bored you would tune out if you were in that conference you wouldn't sit here just doing that so as we do virtual events as we do the hybrid events that's really what we're trying to do jf was another thing at that gala you're turning around to see who's doing bidding. You're like, oh my gosh, they yeah, have that right. much money. Right? <laughs> but that's sort of what the idea, right? Is uh, how do you enhance? How do you make the person who's sitting at home or sitting on their phone or sitting somewhere that isn't that physical space feel like they're involved? Because the natural human thing isn't just to stare at one thing for one time. Really, especially when it comes to the corporate stuff, that's what we're trying to accomplish. Yep. That's yeah. the. That's a. R I don't know that I've ever actually like expressed it or, or heard it expressed that way. But that's like a hundred percent the right the right mindset. Is if you're sitting in the audience, like what would you want to see? 
And when you're in person, you can make that decision yourself. And you can turn around and look at the person yep. talking, but mm -hmm. if you're just staring at a camera, like the question asker is off camera and you can't actually see them if you're at home and there's no camera to capture that. Right. When we're the live production team, we're the filter that is your, you know, we're your surrogate, right? We, we have to decide what you're seeing. That's such a great way to put it. I don't think I've really ever expressly thought it that way, but I think that makes so much sense. And then it's up to, you know, then it comes back to the question of like, what does it add? And right. sometimes... I have to resist the urge if I'm if I'm pushing the buttons or if I'm standing behind the scenes of like not doing too much because you have to go back to that question of what do people want to see. So you mentioned like an all hands meeting. People want to see, you know, the, the C-level executive presenting and they want to see the data. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you want to get crazy and show a bunch of other stuff because you're like, oh, you know, I, I'm I feel like I'm twitchy and I want to be doing more or whatever. Right. That's what they want to see. That's mm -hmm. what it is. It's just a matter of presenting it clean you know, good audio, good video, clear pictures of people, show expressions, allow them to see the information cleanly. And then maybe sometimes in a situation like that, like the additive isn't necessarily another camera, but it's how can we present the data in a more interesting way? Can we have dynamic graphics? Can we, can we suggest ways to split this up? Can we have different speakers? Can we have a back and forth? Less so than do we need to add another camera, right? Picture yeah. in picture. I mean, that thing too, right? A lot of times if you're in that room, you see that slide, you're looking at that, but you're also looking at the CFO speaking because like, hey, this data matters to me at all hands. I'm just sticking with that thing. Like you're definitely gonna be looking at both. So it's sort of being in that, that present, being mindful of what's occurring and how the audience kind of is reacting. And that's what you're trying to capture. And I think that's so different from, you know, the event that we did at Syracuse where the marching band came in and crashed the set and you were switching like a madman between all these different cameras of like, oh, there's a cool close-up of the mascot and a cool close-up of these instruments and the host. And like that is where you're going to be cutting more and adding more. Mm -hmm. um, Could have used a few more cameras. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> more cameras the merrier. Um, but for the all-hand stuff. Like ISO camera on, auto the orange, just see him going yeah. nuts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Like no, and that's, are, that's, those are two total, that's, two totally different examples. And again, like in the situation you described at Syracuse, what does the viewer want to see? Like as much as possible. They we have see to auto dancing. Right, yeah. right. Well, yeah, maybe we should have stayed on auto, <laughs> but also there's a whole band playing. Um, and, you know, you talk about like different adding more cameras or like cutting between cameras. There's also like for an all hands, a lot of times we try to encourage people like what kind of corporate video resources do you have? Do you have something to break up the flow of people going up on stage and presenting a deck that's a different way to show this information. Do you have a pre-produced video? Do you have a customer story? Do you have an infographic? Do you have another way to break this up for the virtual audience so it's not just a, a consistent flow of people? So again, like how do you want to watch this? People at home don't want to just watch someone drone on for 45 minutes. They need to have things presented in different ways to keep their interest. And that's more valuable than like, oh, we're gonna have seven cameras on one guy, right? right? Mm -hmm. The other thing, and I don't think we've, I mean, this is more of a brainstorm conversation for all of us, but how do we show engagement better? Like engagement with that virtual audience, because that's the thing that really keeps people, especially for stuff like all hands, things that are like, hey, I'm not there, but I'm interacting with the poll and stuff. Those are the types of extra shots that we can try to incorporate a little bit because it makes you a part of the show. Mm -hmm. How do we in capture that engagement, right? Because that's why people are standing up. That's why you as the audience member stands up and asks a question nine times. That's why you engage in polls and stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot of great engagement going online. And that's another thing that I feel like we not in general, not just five tool, but that's something that could be captured yeah. that could really help out with the productions. We talked about it with Evertrue before. I mean, I think they do a great job of like bringing the audience mm -hmm. in and encouraging mm -hmm. them to ask questions. And like you all have worked on those projects as well. One of our clients, Evertrue, I think it's like first and foremost, I think it's having content that people actually want to engage with. So you talk about all these elements that make it interesting to the viewer. I think first and foremost, that's the most important thing. Are you presenting something that the viewer cares about? And then second, before you even get to like how it's displayed, is like making sure that the viewer actually knows that we're listening to them. Mm -hmm. um, and a client, like I mentioned Evertrue, right off the bat in their shows, they solicit fun feedback from their viewers and they make it a part of their show, right? And they bring it in, they say, you know, oh, you know, it's, it's the holidays, we wanna know what your favorite Thanksgiving dish is. And then they, oh, Marissa from Natick, you said yours is stuffing. Kyle from Norwood, you said yours is turkey. Like they go through and they actually say like right off the bat, the viewer knows like, oh, I'm a part of this. Right. So like, yes, what you're saying is like finding other ways to like actually tactically do it is great. But first and foremost, I think those two things like, is it relevant and engaging? And then are you acknowledging that engagement and bringing it in? Right. And then the tactical part of like, there's things like Zoom walls where you actually show mm -hmm. virtual attendees up there. It, it's so much easier now to bring in remote guests. I think about even a couple of years ago when we started doing this, the challenges with like bandwidth and quality and all that stuff, bringing in 
virtual guests into like a, a live show environment, it's it's getting easier. I mean, we also have just done it more, but it's getting easier. So like you can also have a live Q and A if you're willing to take that risk and let people do that. <laughs> um, so you know there there are ways, but you're totally right. That's that's this industry has has some work to do to uh, to bridge that gap further for sure. I think yeah. But hey, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, I hope everyone listening you was taking notes because a lot of good information there. Um, visit fabtooproductions.com if you want to get in touch with us, and uh, we'll help you make your event as creative and uh, enjoyable for the online audience as it is for the in person audience. Uh, I've been Connor, Phil, Kyle, Marissa, Five Two Productions. See you next time. Quack it out. Quack. One, two, three. Quack. 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 <laughs> <laughs>